also a reading of Psalm 27, which we do. And by the way, we're not doing it because we, God gives us a checklist and he says, oh, you got to do this and you got to do that. As a matter of fact, it's not even scripture where it says to do it, but it's a good thing to do. It's a nice thing if you, if you've grown up with it and you like it, it's, it's a wonderful, just a wonderful thing to do. Psalm 27 is a great, is, is a great Psalm and uh, blowing the shofar always inspire, inspires us. And um, we yeah, daily. and we, so we do that daily. And then we also have the, um, the Salichot prayers, which, which we say, and we do, we'll talk about that at another time. But today we're going to talk about the choices. So um, it's interesting. So I, this, I choose for myself, and you choose, Rachel, you choose for yourself. We choose to do a lot of those things. You don't have to. That's not, that's not scriptural. It's, it's, it's rabbinic, and it's, but it, we, we enjoy doing it. So we, we, choose, to, we choose to do it. We brought it up that way. So we just, we just choose to do that. But it's there, you receive blessings when you do something that you feel like you want to do. Usually if you want to do it, it's because God's putting it in, the heart, in your heart for you. It may not be for, for your neighbors or your friends, but it's for you. So you do whatever you feel God is telling you to do. So let me give you an example. Which would you choose? Think about this. You're driving down the road in your car on a dark, stormy night. When you pass by a bus stop and you see three people waiting for the bus, you see an old lady who looks as if she's really just about to die. She looks terrible. She's got to get to the hospital. She looks like she's about to die. You also see at that bus stop an old friend who once saved your life. And then you also see the perfect partner you've been dreaming and praying about for all your life. Which one would you choose to offer a ride, knowing that there could be only one passenger in your car? Which one would you choose? Well, that's a hard decision. But there's... Um, a moral and ethical dilemma that was once actually used as part of a job applic application. So this doctor who was, who was um, taking the, the test, the application and the test, he thought about it and he came up with, you could pick up the old lady because she's going to die and thus you should save her first. Or you could take the old friend because he once saved your life, and this would be the perfect chance to repay him. However, you finally found the perfect mate, and you may never be able to find your perfect mate. So what does he do? And all of a sudden, this candidate who was hired out of 200 applicants gave a great answer. He had no trouble coming up with his answer. He simply answered, I would give the car keys to my old friend and let him take the lady to the hospital and I would stay behind and wait for the bus with the partner of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was good. You make choices. So we make choices, but what is that choice telling us? Lots of times in our lives, we have to think out of the box. And you know what? For all of us, all, I know there's so many Jewish people on, on tonight, and most of you who I know know the Lord, but those of you who I don't know if you know the Lord or not, it's stepping out of the box because it may go against what you've learned growing up, but don't worry about that. You're past that. You're past that age. You're, you're past listening to your parents. You are trying to listen to God, and you see the way the world is going. Doesn't look like the the world is going to all of a sudden become perfect, and um, we need to make the choice. The choice of, as Daniel twelve two says, the choice of everlasting life or everlasting contempt, and choosing the Messiah, the Mashiach, who is God and man at the same time, choosing the Mashiach who came for us and died for us, shed his blood for us and was resurrected for us, choosing the Mashiach, we have eternal life. 
a life not of contempt. See, everyone lives. You either live with God, with all the blessings of paradise, or you live away from God with all the curses of uh, all the curses that are, are written in, in the word of God. So um, so we think about we think about choices and um, there was a man who was recently asked and he's uh, by a reporter because he was a very wealthy man and he was um, he was in a, a nursing home and uh, he was asked he said um, what choice what choices have you made that you really think changed your life and he he said he really said this is true he said there are only two choices I, re I really think I've made in my life. Of course, he was wrong because you make choices every day. Um, but he said, there's only two choices. And, and so the reporter asked, well, what, what were they? And he said, well, the first was when I decided to work seriously at being, at being wealthy. He tried, you know, he, he worked, he gave it his all and everything. And he did, be, and he did succeed. And what was the second? And he said, the second was recently I, decide, I decided to retire. That's it, the reporter said in amazement. And he said, I wish I had more, um, but everything I did followed logically from these two decisions. And tell me, the reporter asked, which was the hardest to make? And he said, without a question, the retiring. And then he said, I don't understand, the reporter said incredulously, why did you make it? Because I'm older and now I'm thinking, um, I only made one real choice in my life, and that's what I'm still doing for all these years. Yes, I'm successful, but only one choice. That's kind of a boring life. I wish I could make more choices. And um, so I decided, that's why I decided, I decided to retire. But you see, in nursing homes, they always ask, if you had something to do over again, what would you do? And the answer that, that most people give is, I would have made more choices or I would have taken more risks. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would have taken more risks. And uh, basically the essence of life is just choosing and we have to make our choices. And so we have, the, it's, God doesn't automatically say, oh, well, you're Jewish, come on in. No, he says, I've sent the Messiah. That's my son, I, I put my seed in, in, in the woman and um, planted in, in, in the woman who was, became his mother and he lived a life of 33 years and he went through all the trials and tribu tribulations. He was God and man at the same time and now we have to make a choice. You have to make a choice. Do you want to follow God or do you want to follow the world's ways? And in so many things that are happening now, we have to we have to make choices. So um, I'm I'm going to give you an example of of certain things. Um, you think about it in this time of uh, preparing for uh, Rosh Hashanah. I read this by someone who wrote it by the name of Tamar Tabak, and um, it says during Elul and the High Holy Days, we're given the gift of Teshuvah, the gift to return, and it's to return to God. We, we desire to return to God. And so this is a time of introspection. What are some of the greatest gifts and resources that Hashem has given you? Well, think about it. And then when you think about it, then you have to think about, okay, what is God saying? Say, let's say you're a singer. So um, you have to say, well, I sing and I love singing, so I want to use I want to use my voice. I want to sing. Okay. Well, let's say you don't know where, you don't know what. So you have to ask God and ask God to lead you to where you may be able to lead worship or where. You're, you're going to have a gig and you're going to be able to sing. But God's given you gifts and he's given you gifts for a reason. Now, uh, I know God's given me gifts for my, Jew for my Jewish people. And that's why 
as I said, even when I was an eye doctor, and I say this all the time, when I was an eye doctor for all those years, um, I led so many people, so many Jewish people to the Lord. But um, in the last 14 years I had in, in Orlando, um, I hardly led anyone to the Lord because when I'm out with people, that's when that's, I use the gifts that God's given me and I'm able to lead the people to the Lord. God just sends them to me. He touches them. He prepares them. And, and I do, and and I do my job. Community right, right, right. And there's difference in community makeup and everything. But, um, and so you have to think about what do you want for the coming year? What are you looking for in, in, in this coming year? In other words, like what are some of the top areas of priority that require your attention? What is it? Is it, is it your job? which could be fine. Is it your family? Is it your children? Is it um, your ministry? Um, or is it getting closer to God? Is it praying more? There's, there's always things that, that we want to do for the coming year. There's always when there's a new year, we start thinking about, boy, I'd like to do this a little bit differently. Well, well these are things we should think about. This is what the month of Elul is about. It's about taking time with God. It's about some, some people, I mean, we, we do this lots of time. We fast and pray during, during this month. We, pa we fast and we pray and um, we seek God and um, we, we have questions and we ask God and we just, we ain't just, a, we just sit in his presence and he speaks to us and tells us and, and gives us direction. And we make a choice. Uh, right. Yeah, and then we make a choice. Do we really believe this is God who's telling us something? That's what happened when we moved back to, um, to Palm Beach County from, from, um, from Orlando. God spoke to us and we took it. I, we took it to um, at the exec committee of RMJA, which, which I was president of, and, and, um, and we, we took it to, um, elders. to elders and just different, different people in, in, in the movement. And um, everyone, everyone said, yes, just everyone believed God was sending us back. So we made the choice. We could have made the choice would have been to, to stay or we could have made the choice to leave. And we made that choice and that to leave because we felt that's what God was, was saying to us. And, um, and, some, and, and when we go through the year, we have to think about some of the milestones and events and breakthroughs and accomplishments from the previous year, and we have to start really, really, really thanking God. We should be thanking God every single day. And um, we have to thank God for our children, for our grandchildren, for our great-grandchildren. We have to thank God for um, the blessings he gives us, for our health, for, and um, just um, our, the anointing he gives us, all different things, all different things. And... Um, we have to, these are things, these are things to think about, wonderful things to think of, they're just kind of practical, practical areas. Life is a choice. And, and um, that's what life, life is, is definitely a choice. How you spend your time. Right, right. And, and that's right. We have to make a decision on how we spend our time. And think about it. We have to think about in what areas do you think you've grown the most? Now, we all have things that we lift up to God. What areas have we grown the most? And in those areas where we haven't, we have to keep lifting them up to God and thanking God for the growth, even if it's a little bit, the growth that we've seen. And if it's nothing, we say, okay, Lord, thank you. I know you're with us, but you, um, I didn't grow in this area, but I did grow in that area, and I thank you for that. We have to keep thanking God. And what are some of your greatest insights that you now have that you didn't have as strongly last year? These are just, again, things to, things to meditate about. Because all these things, they don't just happen. They don't just coincidentally happen. God is in control of our life. And God loves us. 
And he wants us to meditate. He wants us to take this time. There were different times during the year when God calls us to a closer walk with him. In the month of Elul, in the time of Sephirat HaOmer, that's another, that's another time. In the time of um, the holidays, the 10 days of, of awe. Mm -hmm. um, and just certain times that God is, is calling us into his presence more. And just we have to bless God over and over and over and over again that we don't have to worry if God has a checklist. He doesn't because he just knows everything. But he, we don't have to worry about a checklist. We have the Messiah living within us. We have Yeshua living within us. It's all about Yeshua. And there's, we have to fear not because he loves us, never leave us nor forsake us. So, but we actually have to ask him, how can we utilize the gifts, God, that you gave? Let's see if we each say, God, the gifts you gave me, how can I use that to bring greater light into the world? How can we do? How can I do that? What do you want me to do? Who do you want me to speak to? What? Who do you want me to pray for? Who do you want me to forgive? Who do you want me to forgive? What do you want me to repent? Is there someone who? Um, is there someone who has offended me and I still hold it against against that person? Well, then I, I need I I need God to show me that, and I need and I need to repent. And I need repenting by forgiving that person and that's why i every, all the time every day i always ask the lord and i i you know think of different names of, of, of people and i say lord i just pray that i have um that i have in my heart totally forgiven so and so or totally forgiven that one and um why is that important because there are certain behaviors that we have that block us from becoming a better self and um, and what we can do to eliminate these behaviors is really because they're really spiritual behaviors that what we can do to eliminate these behaviors is to give it to god eliminate reduce these behaviors by just giving it to god asking god say god i know i know that um uh, like if you have if you have uh, a tendency to slander someone so, you know, then realize why are you slandering that person? You know why you're slandering that person? Because you don't think highly enough of yourself. So you want to blow out the other person's candle so your candle should, can shine brighter. Um, and, then, and then if you had a trait that you think that just bothers you, that you have this trait, then think about um, how you'd like to change, change that, tra that trait to be a more to be a more balanced person what would it be think of a way ask god and god will speak to us um some people especially during this covid ha feel so anxious and panicky and we have to take these thoughts these thoughts these fearful thoughts these anxious thoughts um, being lonely and depressed or alone, and um, ask God to turn them into something that is spiritually productive in these moments. Let it have Him speak to us. Even just hearing His voice is just, we feel so good, so fulfilled when we hear His voice. And we think about that we're really not alone. <clears throat> First of all, we have. We have God with us, <clears throat> first and most important. And then, even if we are alone, we're not alone because when we're in a body, there are so many other people that are having the same thoughts, the same anxiety. And so we can all get together and share our comments with each other and share what the Lord is doing in our life. And then we have to ask God, say, God, show me something that, that, that I need to improve in my relationship with you, Lord God. And, and um, 
the guide will show you. He'll show you. Um, he may say, well, you, you, you talk about praying all the time, but um, you really don't pray that much. And um, I want you to come to me. And that's, that's what God wants. It's just like our children. We, want, we get upset when our children don't come to us for a long time. We want our children to come to us, to be with us. We want it to be, that's, that's what we desire. And again, that's another reason why we knew God was sending us down, back down to Palm Beach County, because our children, we have children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren that all live here in Palm Beach County. So it's, um, it's a blessing. And, um, and then think about how you'd like to make a choice that what you can do with your, just your interpersonal relationships, how it can improve and how you can implement a change. So there are all different things. There are all different things that we have. And, and um, like one question is, what in general, when in general do you feel most alive? And you know when, with me, it's when I'm, when I'm speaking, when I'm um, giving the word of God, when I'm speaking, either I could be, be this on Facebook Live or speaking in the congregation or just speaking to people and witnessing and telling them about my Lord. I wake up. I get so much excitement telling people about my Lord because I want them to have that same excitement and that same relationship with the God of all creation. It is so unbelievable. And I know some of you, I know, like Charlie, I know you're on, and, and um, I know you feel, I know you feel that way in, in, in your gift. And it's amazing, you know, we've spoken about that at different times. And, and just like I feel in my gift, you feel in your gift. And it's just, it's just an amazing thing when the Lord comes and his presence is upon you and you're in his presence. Doesn't matter if you weren't feeling well, if you had a sore throat, if, um, you were um, coming down with something. It doesn't matter when you're in the presence of the Lord. You just feel so good, and you just feel like you're healed. And it, it's like if you could see if it was a TV show or a movie, they would take the, the, the shining light and put it upon you. That's what it's like. That's what it's like when you function in your gift. And um, that's so that's so be that's so beautiful, and that's so we have to think about things like that. When do we feel most alive? And when we think, when we see that, then we we know that that's because God's given given us a gift. You think about what's the most difficult choice you ever made. It's the most difficult choice choice you ever made. And um, and think about how you made how you made that that choice. And maybe sometimes when you think about how you made that choice, your life followed a certain path because of how you made that choice. Because maybe it wasn't the right choice to make. Maybe you felt pressured into making a choice. And if you felt pressured into it, it's a lot different from when you make a choice because you're excited. This is what you want. This is what your heart's desire is. And think about some of the choices you're facing now. Are you dealing with the choices now? Or are you just trying to go around it? Because if you try to go around it, it's not going to go away. It's still going to be there. So you have to deal with the choice. Sometimes it's calling up someone and you're saying, hi, um, I just wanted to call. I just, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot. And I want to ask you um, for forgiveness for how I spoke to you the other day or something like that. You know, um, these, are, these are choices, what we make. And um, pretty much to end, I want to um, read that, you know, there's a KGB officer knocked three times. No, wrong. Um, right, here it is. Um, a KGB officer knocked three times and asked, um, does Kapolsky live here? And no, 
came the stern reply from behind the tightly closed door. And the officer shrugged and walked away, only to return a half hour later. He knocked again three times, and this time even harder than he did before. Are you Kapolsky? Are you, are you sure Kapolsky doesn't live here? And he said, very sure, I can tell you Kapolsky doesn't live here, came the immediate answer. Well, what's your name, the officer questioned. My name is Kapolsky. Kapols I thought you said Kapolsky doesn't live here. Kapolsky replied, yeah, you call this living? It's not living, it's existing. I exist. That's it, it's not living. So I don't live here, I exist here. If you would have asked if I exist here, I would have said yes. And if you think about it, existing is easy, but living requires active participation and making choices. And we can go through a whole year of just existing, or we could go through a year of making choices. And when we make choices, we who know our God, who have a relationship with our God, let us make the choices that God speaks to us, that it's from God. It's only from God. It's all about God. Amen. So that's what we need. That's what we need to do. We need to make choices, but let us make the correct choices this year. And let us start off by in the month of Elul, by meditating and fasting and praying and seeking him and drawing near to him and getting in the presence of the king who is in the field and thanking him because how blessed we are, we who know Messiah always have the king in the field and we can always go to him. So we just thank God for all our blessings and let me do the ironic benediction. Yivarecha Adonai v'yishmarecha, the Lord bless you and keep you. Ya'er Adonai p'nevelecha v'lipanecha, the Lord puts his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yisa Adonai p'nevelecha v'yisem lecha shalom, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, shalom, b'shem Yeshua m'shekenu b'sa shalom. May he grant you peace, perfect peace, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Amen. And uh main and um so we want to remind you that if you didn't do it before then please follow like and share our facebook page and don't forget if you have any prayer requests or questions or um, want to say a kaddish on a shabbat for someone just send it into dr charlie k at aol.com or send it into the facebook page and uh, we shalu shalom Yerushalayim. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Be safe, stay healthy, and be blessed. And hope to see you Friday night, Erev Shabbat, 7.30. Again, be blessed, and we send all our love to you. Amen. Amen.